Hello guys, we continue our mission on Laravel daily of upgrading older courses to Laravel 11 and I want to present the newest addition to that is View Inertia with Laravel 11 course. It has been updated into a text form course with the latest Laravel 11 changes and in this video I will read the first few lessons and explain Inertia to those of you who haven't tried it. So why Inertia and how does it work? So let's take a look what's inside. If you want the full course, the link will be in the description below. So inside this course, we're creating a typical CRUD application just with Inertia and Vue.js. So first, the lesson about Inertia in general, single page applications, SPAs, and why you would need that in what situations. So if you have a typical Laravel page, for example, registration form, in the browser network tab, you will see all the assets being loaded every time you visit every new page. All the CSS, JS, and images. So if you go to login, for example, again, everything is reloaded. Now with Inertia, with single page application, this is different. You visit register, it's still all loaded, but then you click on login and only those two assets are loaded. Request for the login page, which actually returns JSON and one JS request. So the result of that login is actually returns JSON with the content of the page, this part that needs to be replaced with HTML. All the other main page remains unchanged with the same assets that have been loaded before. So this is in general how single page applications work with or without inertia. Now how inertia works with Laravel, the only change in the controller, for example, is that you return not the blade file, but you return inertia render with Vue.js component. So inertia is kind of a bridge. It's not a framework in itself. It's a bridge between Laravel, for example, and Vue.js, but it's not necessarily those two. In Laravel, you can use inertia with React, for example. There's also the version for Svelte, and on the backend, not only Laravel, there's also Rails version. And now to get more practical, we will transform Vue.js component with API to inertia. And this is actually one of the benefits to use inertia is you don't need to create separate Laravel API. You still use it like regular Laravel controllers, just return the Vue.js component. So the code before typical Vue.js component with listing the posts, for example, I won't get too deep into that. I will just scroll down to the actual inertia part. So the old version before inertia gets the post from the API with Axios get. And then in the controller, this is the API controller that returns all the posts. And in this case, we also use eloquent API resources. Now with inertia, it's different. We install inertia, then we configure the default layout with inertia head here and inertia in the body. Then we also need to configure inertia middleware. And this is the part that was changed in Laravel 11 because in Laravel 11, middlewares are configured in the bootstrap app file. Before Laravel 11, it used to be in app HTTP kernel file. So here you add with middleware web handle inertia requests. That middleware will be used for passing some parameters and you will see that later in the course if you take the course. Now on the client side, we also need to install inertia. So after Vue.js, we install this one. And then in the main JavaScript file, instead of mounting the component this way, we create inertia app. This will be the main method, a bit different syntax. And then the main part, Laravel controller, instead of having a separate API controller, we just return inertia render. And on the Vue.js side, instead of using composables now, we are catching the props here. Then the route to show the post, this is not API route again. And this is the actual result. So the page itself didn't change, but now the data is loaded without Laravel API with the help of inertia. And then later in this course, we work on building more of that application. You can see the table of contents on the right. So SPA with links. So how to navigate between the pages, how to change layout, for example, list of posts should be different from login and register layout. Then we create the CRUD forms and work on login and register to actually work with inertia. Again, the link to the full course will be in the description below. What do you think about inertia? Do you use that? And in general, do you use Vue.js with Laravel? In my experience, the trend is towards tall stack in Laravel ecosystem. So I see fewer developers using Vue and more developers using Livewire or Filament on top. But maybe it's just my experience and my kind of a bubble. Let's discuss in the comments below.
That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.